Well, <clears throat> I'm having a devil of a time with this camera. Seems to be consuming a memory card at an alarming rate. I could be wrong about that, but it seems that way. And this is Earth Day 2012, and I wanted to read some poems. And I shall start with this one called Loving the Mother. So now I am visualizing the letters I have written, cast to the wind like so many leaves. I like to imagine a fragrant forest where some wander to fall upon a patch of deep green moss. There are autumnal fiery reds dancing with saffron yellows and lush mango oranges to drums. Their content to be heard, not read, like songs of birds to enchant, to entreat, to engage. Each page a poem bearing lightly the scent of sage, sacred in its purification power. The receivers illuminated brightly in golden gossamer shafts as they in the circle stand. Percussion of hearts and drums coalesce with that of the magnificent mother in love. Yeah. And here is another prayer for the singer. Aloof I wandered in pleasant peripheries, profoundly preferred to accepted norms. My contemporaries continued to converge, crowding in cacophonic courses of consumers crazed by collective conditioning of church and state. I, too, have been swept up, swirled around and spit out from time to time, there to find my senses sheathed in sweet silence as serene prelude to reassociation with Gaia's song. In these transitory twilights, truth tableaus. In these transitory twilights, truth teaches. In these transitory twilights, truth terrorizes. Realities are revealed relentlessly to cognizant receptors from raw by the ride. Society says savagely, swiftly surrender your soul to the salesman as the plan, the polity, the position in which to abide. I resist. I insist there is another way. I pay the price of pain to regain the high ground I found in my days of wonder, my days of wonder. I pray the thunder will bring rain to wash the stain, the raucous refrain, the surreal staccato of mechanized, electrolyzed, technolized masses of modern man from the once serene surface of the singer. Yes, that would be nice. Hmm. Well then, in addition to that, I will read Whispers. How is it that we lost our Eden? There is no doubt it was ours, passed down to us in a pristine panoply of palpable pleasures to all of the senses. The mere sight, sound, smell of it brought the purest joy. Symphonies of wind through ancient unsullied trees, echoing sighs of the seas, caressed our ancestors exquisitely to the edge of the dawn of industry and beyond. Now, the great sleuths of nature, traveling to the remotest places, find but few traces of Eden. Alas, they may not all say it, yet we surely know most are thinking the same thing. Overwhelming evidence bears them out, so even the blind among us must be aware. Whispers... Worrying a multitude of minions, make an unsettling music discordant to that of the spheres. No matter the tongue, the song is the same everywhere. How is it, in arias of anguish, that we have lost our Eden? And on Earth Day I say that with utmost sincerity. And on Earth Day, I would read two poems for the wolves who are being slaughtered as we speak by insane legislation by fat, corporate, greedy men who uh, think to just consume gluttonously everything that there is. It's theirs because they can afford whatever um, things are necessary to bring this type of thing about. Little do they know that Ma exacts a price for that kind of shit. So here is my homage to the wolves on Earth Day. Swift Shadow's Song In the ice milk magnificence of the winter night's moon, I choose to roam with the alpha female of the druid peak pack. 
Her tag number is 45, but she has a name among her kind. Swift shadow, like smoke on silent snowed pads pacing, racing the terrified ancient elk. Rich red reward realized we gorge ourselves in order. On the border of our diminutive vastness is death. No signs to read, this fact taught by wanderlust woes and throes of innocent agony. Memories run deep as crusted snow, for once more we go, exhilarated by pristine promise of the hunt, dancing the moonbeams in single file a while, then we fan out seeking the one, we move out sensing the one, see sylvan shine eyes selecting the one, the one, the one we will bring down tonight. In crimson stained crystal moonlight dancing, we howl Swift Shadow's song. Yeah. Great Otter. The Swan Lake pack did not need another female, even if she was a daughter of the Alpha Pair, so she left. Left the pack, left the park, and embarked upon a quest. Great Otter, number 293, were you looking for me? Not knowing how or where to find me, not knowing why? My ego would like to think so. I know you were seeking a mate. You got all the way to a date on a highway in Colorado. Your fate, I fear, yet you did make it clear more would follow. Some will survive the onslaught of vicious vehicles, senseless ranchers, and more than a few fools. They will thrive on abundant elk and deer, and whatever they need to stay alive, biding their time till the numbers are strong. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the numbers are strong, baby. You want the numbers to be strong, baby. Here's another one that I like to think in terms of when one loves the mother. This is how the mother is to her children who are cognizant of that. Cool is the name of this poem. Creek Pebbles. My bare fleet dislodge are swept down the cool, refreshing, singing waterway to bounce off other creek pebbles and an occasional crustacean who in turn dislodges a few more creek pebbles in his quest for food, lady crustacean contact, or a place to stay. My journey down the blissfully babbling brook, like the nomadic crustacean, brings me to a waterfall in my quest for a play space, contact with a water nymph, or a bite to eat. I dip my skinny in the deep swimming hole made by the waterfall over the many years of carousing crustaceans, wandering water nymphs, and pebble pushers. Ah, where is that water nymph? <laughs> yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And I think that I've pretty well run the gamut on my uh, oh my nature stuff um, here here's one rising I heard our mother sighing crying she is deep in distress at the ubiquitous young ones their slaughter of all the old ones she cries glacial tears cascading into the salt seas rising she laments for far too few fight to save the magnificent diversities of ancient orders Heedless to her pleas, to her message, her dire warnings, they multiply, greed-driven, voracious vampires, consuming the beautiful garden of earthy deep heights.